This week's episode takes us to the International Space Station National Lab. We'll learn the effects of wildfires on dangerous mudslides, new ways to cool the next generation electronics, and check out how stem cell-derived heart muscles might someday save lives. This is NSF Science, now. As the number of wildfires continues to increase worldwide, they damage plants and even the soil. This can result in an increased runoff after intense rainfall. This combination can put homes and other structures below the burned area at risk of dangerous, fast-moving mudslides. Burned soil becomes coated in wax, making it water repellent. When heavy rain hits the ground, the water cannot sink in, detaching soil particles and sending larger amounts of charred earth downhill at speeds of upwards 35 miles per hour, decimating everything in their path in as little as 15 minutes, even causing death. Little is understood about how these mudslides transport debris and how the charred soil interacts with air and water. NSF-supported engineers from UC San Diego want to understand the unique dynamics of mudslides, the debris structure, and the role gravity plays, specifically those occurring after wildfires. So we want to uh, improve the knowledge of uh, post-wildfire mud flow, flow and transport and impact uh, on communities and on infrastructure. These debris flows and mud flows uh, from coming from post-wildfire uh, areas uh, were carrying large boulders and a lot of debris down the hill and uh, these boulders hit houses and uh, landed on roads and destroyed property and also some people died because they could not uh, escape. So the risk uh, assessment and the warning uh, systems are not entirely in place for these post-wildfire mud flows. They are uh, catastrophic and fast. The team's project traveled to the International Space Station National Lab. I am really, really grateful and happy to have opportunity to do uh, research on ISS. This is really almost like a dream come true. There, the ISS astronauts will conduct experiments to study the bubble sand structure and mudslide dynamics in microgravity, sending real-time data back to the team. The sand particles in gravity are um, going to fall down on the bottom of, of, a, of a mix. And uh, the air bubbles uh, that we observed are trapped inside of these mixtures in gravity are going to flow out. So we always have um, a segregated flow in, in layers. But we want to know what is the baseline uh, for these mixtures. What, what is their internal structure and what is the behavior when they flow and how can they transport objects. That's why we are sending uh, these uh, experiments to the International Space Station so that we can uh, better understand the effect of gravity by comparing results from flow experiments of different mixtures with different ratios uh, with the gravity force and without the gravity force. Results from the ISS experiments that demonstrate the effects of air could be incorporated into the models, which could then provide more accurate predictions of conditions that may result in dangerous mudslides. Heat transfer is involved in everything from computer chips to spacecraft cooling systems that use liquid that changes phase, like water boiling on a surface, play an important role in emerging technologies, including microchips and solar power systems. But understanding the role vapor bubbles play in cooling electronic components is critical. When you see a conventional boiling process taking place, such as in your kitchen, uh, there are vapor bubbles rising from the surface. It's primarily a battle between two forces. One force that's trying to keep the bubbles attached to the surface and one that's trying to tear them away. The one that's keeping them attached are surface tension forces and the one that's tearing them away are buoyancy forces. Those work with uh, in the presence of gravity and when you have no gravity such as in outer space applications, spacecraft applications, uh, then there's an imbalance of those forces which then doesn't allow a vapor bubble to leave the surface. So the very aspect that causes boiling to be an efficient heat transfer mechanism is now completely removed. That is why NSF-supported Auburn University engineers are looking to space for help. 
they have sent their Ascent project to the International Space Station National Lab to explore how vapor bubbles react in the weightlessness of space. So like with any other type of uh, craft, an aircraft or an automobile even, uh, there are heat generating components on board a spacecraft. And to try to cool them most efficiently, one would lean on a process such as boiling. And if that process doesn't work well, then you have to do something to adapt to make it work well. Because otherwise, we've seen prior imagery from prior missions where you have these vapor bubbles that continue to adhere to the surface and become larger and larger to where you've got a large vapor mass sitting on the surface. And heat transfer to vapor is even worse than heat transfer to a stagnant uh, pool of liquid. So it actually takes you in the wrong direction. So our efforts will hopefully allow that vapor mass to be carried away. The goal is to develop simple passive automated technologies to stop premature electronic burnout in current electronics and future technology that rely on this two-phase cooling process. So conventional cooling techniques like conve like just force convection, you know, uh, blowing things and, you know, natural convection have their limits in the amount of heat they can dissipate. So this project that uses two-phase boiling can actually move vapor bubbles passively across microstructured surfaces and electronic surfaces so it can propel next-gen electronics. Over 6.2 million adults suffer from heart failure. This growing problem in the U.S. occurs when the heart muscle gets injured due to a heart attack or high blood pressure. The heart gradually loses the ability to pump enough blood to supply what the body needs. Heart failure is a progressive disease. Currently, the only treatments include medicine and lifestyle changes. There has been no way to replace the damaged muscle but NSF-supported engineers at Emory University are exploring a possible alternative. Heart muscle cells do not regenerate once they are damaged. So stem cell-derived muscle cell can be used as a cell replacement therapy to repair damaged heart. This stem cell-derived muscle cell can also be used to study heart disease and drug response without having to take patients' heart cells. Cell properties are affected by gravity, and until now, the team has been using a random positioning machine to simulate a microgravity environment here on Earth. In our ground-based study using similar microgravity in a bioreactor, we saw improved maturation of some cell-derived muscle cells. However, a bioreactor can only mimic some aspect of a space microgravity. The team's project, supported by NSF and CASIS, traveled to the International Space Station National Lab. We are sending cryopreserved microtissues to the International Space Station. On the ISS, the astronauts were sawed uh, the microtissues, cultured them in a cell culture device for about a week, and then sent uh, back to us uh, the preserved cell samples. They hope to gain a better understanding of stem cell-derived muscle cells. We hope to learn how stem cell-derived muscle cells change following exposure to space microgravity. The team sees this research as taking medicine to a whole new level. Applying this insight to research on Earth could help the production of better muscle cells for the treatment of heart disease. For more information about other NSF-supported projects currently at the International Space Station National Lab, visit our YouTube page. This is NSF Science Now. I'm Dina Headley.